My first guest tonight experienced the struggles of redistricting and the process that goes along with it firsthand. Ten years ago, Richard Emery was the attorney for a group of voters who sued to make sure that minorities were treated fairly in the redrawing of the state Senate lines. He is joining us in the studio tonight to talk more about what today's news might mean. Hello, Mr. Emery, how are you? Hi, Liz. How are you? I am well, thanks. It's good to see you. So if you good would just you. give us a brief synopsis of that lawsuit 10 years ago. Well, the lawsuit 10 years ago addressed what we considered to be gerrymandering by the Republican majority in the Senate. At that time, it was strictly uh, an attack on the Senate redistricting because they underpopulated the upstate Senate districts, which gave them one extra district upstate, overpopulating the downstate districts. They also manipulated some lines which we said, we claimed, uh, deprived minority candidates of an opportunity to be elected in uh, Nassau County and in the Bronx. Uh, all of those claims were rejected by a three-judge court in, uh, in the Second Circuit uh, in New York City. Well, what's interesting about this, and what we're talking about here, we should be clear, is today we learned that New York is definitely going to lose two House seats because of the census numbers. What you and I are discussing here is the redrawing of state legislative lines. The legislature is going to be in charge of doing both in, in the That's coming correct. years. Okay. That's, that's correct. And what's important to know about your lawsuit, just generally speaking as a lesson, is that this is usually a process that is fraught with, with legal problems, basically, with legal battles. And even if they take the politics out and they say they're going to, um, it's probably going to end up in court. I will be very surprised if anybody successful, as much as Mayor Koch has tried to get the politics out of this. The uh, politics, as we know, the old, the old saying is, this is the time when, when the, uh, the, the, the representatives choose their voters rather than the voters choosing their representatives. That's what redistricting is, and it's the height of politics. Everybody's trading, everybody's finagling, everybody's trying to get the advantage of incumbency in particular. And um, it's pretty bad. It's, it's, it's bad in the sense that there's an unholy deal which we'll see if it holds this time, but it's been true for at least four redistricting cycles in New York, uh, where the legit, where the assembly keeps its hands off the Senate, and the Senate keeps its hands off on the assembly, and either one can do whatever it wants in the majority, and that means that nobody's holding anybody accountable to anything. And then the governor has traditionally just signed off on both of them. Okay. Um, but Andrew Cuomo has said, I mean, I don't even know where to start with that. First of all, we've had, we have four, three of the four legislative leaders all signed this pledge. I mean, we have uh, Ed Koch was here yesterday and saying, I'm going to hold these guys to those pledges, those pieces of paper that they put their signatures to. And even the governor himself has said, I support the idea of vetoing a plan that does not, that doesn't take politics out of the equation. And you're saying you don't think that's going to happen. Well, I mean, I'm trying to be realistic. Um, I have the greatest admiration for Andrew Cuomo, and I have a high admiration for Ed Koch. But you're talking about the lifeblood of these legislators, and they aren't going to give up their self-interest in the districts they like easily. And they are going to demand of their leadership that they get the, that they get the districts they like. And that's why not even legislation does the trick. You really need a constitutional en amendment mm. like that which the City Bar Association recommended in 2007. So do you believe that there is a way to redraw these lines such that the Republicans actually can keep themselves in power in the Senate even though the state's population drain has occurred largely upstate and the numbers in terms of enrollment in the Democratic Party versus the Republican Party favors the Democrats? It's going to be very hard. It's going to be an extremely jerry-rigged operation to keep the Republicans in power. But we said the same thing in 2000, and they did it. They did it all the way till 2008, uh, obviously on those original lines. And the lines that will be drawn here will, in fact, do everything they can if, if the Senate, if the Senate uh, majority has control over it, and I expect they will, to uh, perpetuate Republican dominance. The history of the state is Republican do dominance in the Senate. Uh, now, obviously, the demographics have continually and, and uh, dramatically favored the Democrats, but it just shows how much jerry-rigged and gerrymandered redistricting can do to reach a result. 
What? I still have the hope. I still have the hope that the demo demographics will win out overall. And if the demographics don't, the courts will require a fair redistricting if we don't get one in the first place. But I, I'm, I have to be cynical about this, and any reasonable citizen who understood this process would be cynical. You actually, what happened the last time around when you had this lawsuit was we got a special master. We got a court-appointed special master, and that actually for happened... For the House seats. In, in, for the House seats in 1992 as well. So That's what, right. what is the likelihood that we're going to end up seeing, in your opinion, some kind of legal um, involvement into the redrawing of the lines, either on the state level or, or on the federal level? Uh, on both levels, I would I would venture to guess it would be a hundred percent. Wow! Uh, there will be litigation on this issue, Voting Rights Act litigation as well as one person one vote litigation and gerrymandering litigation. But let me just say that the house the house situation always ends up being a lot more fair because you can't manipulate the numbers as easily in the house situation because you have to have the exact number of pop equal population per district for the house districts whereas you have a 10 percent slippage for districts for both uh, both houses of the legislature and the 10 percent slippage between different districts the population between different districts gives a lot of room for gerrymandering yeah, this is all, it's all very complicated, but what we know now as of today is that we are going to definitely have two fewer members of Congress representing New York than we that's did. That's correct. Right. So, and, and that's a loss of clout, obviously. In terms of the state lines, it's going to be anyone's guess. I, I'm going to want to weigh in with you again, I hope, in the future, Richard Emery. I want to thank you very much for coming by to talk to us. Anytime, Liz. Pleasure. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate it.